Okay, this is ongoing work which I'm doing with uh, Golundo, Mwabo and uh, Wambugo, who is not here, Wambugo. Uh, we have not quite managed to sort out the toolkit on all the years for which the focus is on. Uh, but we have a large, long background and we have got a lot of bits and pieces, so I'll tell you the story as I see it, uh, as we see it right now. First, going back to some older work, uh, starting from 1914. Uh, I was interested in this idea of structural change and how the structural change of the economy drives the Gini. And until 1976, you had data for Kenya by race. Then all became Kenyans. But you had whites, Asians, and blacks. So you could compute, and you had data for various years on employment levels and wages by race. And you had some other estimates that you could use. So I computed GDP and allocated it to 12 or 11 income groups by race, by type of employment, agriculture, etc. And also I allocated capital income, which means that these genies are going to be pretty high. That was the most uh, random. But anyway, what happened in Kenya was that the Gini coefficient, basically, if we believe this estimate, was increasing while we modernized the economy. So up to about 1950, Gini was continuously going up because the modern sector of the economy was employing more and more people and more and more people getting higher incomes. And you also had this inflow of Asians and whites. So the, it was a very racial society at the time. So for example, in 1950, about half GDP went to non-Africans. That was like one, two percent of population. So I think in 1950, if we want a long-term perspective here, the income levels what one was one to ten to a hundred between Africans, Asians, and whites. So that's within we've pulled, rolled back since then uh, to some extent, uh, or to high extent. But the whites and the Asians mean much less before, than before. Uh, if you look at what drives the change in inequality, the national gene of the first period, it is the compositional change to some extent, but also of course relative income changes in different sectors. For example, you can see that when the urban, rural and agricultural, non-agricultural gap shrinks, the Gini goes down. So the two things that are important here are the uh, relative size of the sectors, or the income, income groups, and the gap between them. Uh, from independence in 63, the income distributions among the groups were overlapping much more. But one thing we pick up from this part, which we want to bring into this sort of second part, is this important of the structural change and how that drives the compositional change, how that drives inequality. Another paper I've been involved in is we try to measure factorial income distribution change in Kenya between 70, uh, 64 and um, 2000. What is wrong there, basically? Where we have estimated wages with. Back, backed out capital re returns from production function estimates, and we have uh, land prices as a proxy for land rents, and we also have the fr proportions of those, and we try to see what drives these relative prices between wages and uh, rentals, for example, over time. And we were interested in the globalization opening up, does that change relative prices, which drive these prices? Basically, we don't find anything like that. We find that the quantity of factors drives prices up. So the fact that land is not really expanding drives the price of land up dramatically. And capital returns are more or less constant, and wages are pretty much constant until the mid-90s. So one thing that happens, which we have a hard time to explain, which is probably important for our later income distribution analysis, is that from about mid-90s, wages start to shoot up. So from about 95, when the labor market was liberalized until 2007, real wages in the formal sector went up by 75%. But from 2008, it's going down again by 25%. And this is, there was crisis in 2007, 8 of course. But still, this is, uh, we had a hard time to explain that in our time series econometrics, we put in a dummy to think about it later. But the most interesting thing from this part of the analysis, which we extend into the la latest period, is that if you look at the capital labor ratio that peaked in 1980, so K over L has been going down since the 1980s for 30 years. And 
what's happening in Kenya is basically that you have a structural transformation where people are leaving agriculture, going to the rest of the economy, and since K over L is going down, they have to go to something which is less capital intensive, that is the informal sector. So if you look at what's been happening into the pattern of labor over the years, last 20 years or so, formal employment has barely risen at the same, t same rate as labor force or less, while informal employment has increased very rapidly. So half labor is out of agriculture, but most of them are in the informal sector. And that is important then for the outcomes. Uh, we have some data here for 94 and 97, uh, 2005, 6. There is some data for 97, we'll squeeze in in between. But basically what we find here is that inequality, well, first, this is not a great growth period. All the growth after 2002 starts to increase. So One minute. Yeah, so growth goes up quite good after 2002, but from 94 to 2005, per capita incomes are maybe five, six percent higher. So it's not much. What go, what's happened since the, during this period is this low growth has led to higher inequality, somewhat increased poverty. All the most of that happened in the first period, 94 to 97. So we will then try to explain and analyze this to a larger extent why we have this pattern. But for example, this shift in the structure of work that people are leaving agriculture, not being absorbed by the formal sector, but going into a wide informal sector explains, I think, what we see here, that urban inequality is going up a lot. Rural inequality is actually going down in most of the regions. And if you aggregate that together, the national Gini goes up. So, in a way, it's the same kind of similar story that we saw in the good old days, that uh, these compositional changes drive the Gini up. Poverty has gone up a little. We also have some estimates from DHS about social indicators. They look a bit better, actually, most of them. Uh, so we need to sort this out. And next time we meet, we might have. Thank you.